This is a tale that begins with failure, as stories of all great innovations tend to do. In the early 1850s, the New York, Newfoundland and London Telegraph Company, led by Mr. Cyrus Field, was formed and acquired the rights to land a telegraph cable at Newfoundland. In search of investors, Mr. Field went to London. 350 men bought shares worth £1,000 each, and the Atlantic Telegraph Company was born. For the venture, HMS Agamemnon, a battleship in the Royal Navy, and the USS Niagara, a frigate in the US Navy, were loaned by their respective governments. This was before the development of the cable ship as we know it today. The telegraph cable was manufactured to bear three tons. It had a core of seven copper wires, three coats of gutta percha, a layer of thread ute lawn soaked in a tar mixture, and a coat of 18 strands of iron wire, each strand made up of seven wires. Agamemnon and Niagara, joined by four other vessels, left Valencia on the 7th of August, paying out cable as they proceeded. Four days out, disaster struck. The break was applied with too much force, so as the stern of the ship rose with the swell of the waves, the cable parted and sank in two and a half miles of water. For the second attempt, it was agreed Agamemnon and Niagara would meet mid-ocean and lay the cable as they steamed in the opposite direction. On their way, the ships ran through a storm. Agamemnon suffered most, rolling heavily, decks awash, threatening to capsize. Despite storms, near collisions and whales, Agamemnon landed its cable at Knightstown, Valencia on the 5th of August. Niagara landed its cable at Bull's Arm Bay, Newfoundland, on the same day. Mr. Cyrus Field was present for the landing of the cable at Newfoundland. In St. John's, there were celebrations. There was a ball, parade, regatta, and illuminations. The beers flowed freely. Newfoundland and Valencia spoke to one another by relay for 23 days but the signal was very weak. Messages had to be repeated, and at times the signal could only be detected using a mirror galvanometer. While the cable could, it sent messages from the directors of the Atlantic Telegraph Company. Europe and America are united by telegraph. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill towards men. By relay, the speed was over one word of five letters a minute. By galvanometer, the speed was only two words a minute. According to an 1861 government report, the last message received on the 1st of September by Valencia was as follows. The last message received by Newfoundland was The electrical signals had to pass down a cable over 2,500 miles long using only 600 volts. This wasn't enough and the signal was weak. At the eastern end, it was decided to increase the voltage. As a result, the inadequate cable, weakened by bad handling and a deteriorating insulation, failed outright. In the years that followed, the American Civil War interrupted any attempt to lay a third cable. But Mr. Field, Mr. Bender and company did not give up. The 1858 communication innovation had been a sensation. Another attempt would be made. 